Pulp Fiction is a film that really appealed out to me to analyse in great detail. This is a film by the well-known film director Quentin Tarantino. He has had such other hits as Django Unchained, Inglorious Bastards, Reservoir Dogs and the Kill Bill series. This film was nominated for seven Oscars and Best Picture. Pulp Fiction is a postmodernistic film which basically means, and I quote from Google search, a late 20th century film on concepts in the arts, architecture and criticism which represents a detachment from modernism and is characterised by the self-consciousness, use of earlier styles and conventions, a mixing of different architect styles and media, and a general distrust of theories. The film itself is very odd. It has a seemingly complete narrative but is split into different segments like a puzzle. I find it quite ironic how it's a so-called gangster film, although it does not feature a single policeman throughout the entirety of the film. In my eyes, it is a montage of interesting and colourful characters. The storyline revolves around two hitman gangsters, a boxer, a gangster's wife, and a pair of diner thieves. To start off, I'm going to give a brief run-through of the movie by each storyline, not by each part. First off, we see Ringo and Honeybee. They are sat in the diner, of which they are planning to rob and eventually do. We only see these two at the start of the film and the end of the film. Next, we move on to Vincent Vega and Jules. These two are the hired hitmen for big-time LA gangster Marcellus Wallace. They start the story off by having an in-depth conversation about European food and a royale with cheese. Then they go to an apartment to collect a package for Mr. Wallace from his business partners. They greet the business partners and discuss the Royal of Cheese conversation with them. Then they get down to business and collect the package and kill three out of the four people in the room. The last one living they take along with them as he would call the police on them otherwise. As they are on their way back to Mr. Wallace, Vincent accidentally shoots him in the face, i.e. the one they brought with them, making the car look like a bloodbath. So Jules calls his friend Jimmy, who is Quentin Tarantino, who he likes to play in each film, if they can clean the car there. When they get there, Jules makes another call to Mr. Wallace to see if he can get anyone to send help to help situation. Of which he sends Wolf. Wolf is a man who is best at solving out sticky situations. They get everything sorted just in time before Jimmy's wife arrives home and they go to get some food which is when they arrive at a diner where Ringo and Honeybee are about to rob. Ringo and Honeybee start the robbery and try to take Jules's wallet, but Jules defuses the situation and they leave. Then they get to Mr. Wallace with the briefcase. Storyline 2. Now this one involves Butch the Boxer. We first see Butch in a meeting with Mr. Wallace about him taking a fall in his next match. He agrees, takes the payment and leaves. When it comes to the match, he wins by killing the opponent and then makes a getaway to his girlfriend, who is at some sort of motel. All is well for him until he finds out his girlfriend didn't pack his great-grandfather's watch, which is passed down to him through the generations and means such a big deal to him. He then goes back to the apartment to get the watch and runs into Vincent, who was sent there by Mr. Wallace to kill him, but Butch kills him first. Butch then makes his way back to his girlfriend, but he only goes and runs over Mr. Wallace on the street after seeing him. They have a big fight and tumble into a redneck shop. They are then taken hostage by the owner and kept to deal with for Zed. Zed arrives, and we find out they like to have sex with other men. They start off with Mr. Wallace, and then Butch manages to break free and returns to help out Mr. Wallace. In doing so, Butch and Mr. Wallace are now cool, and Butch goes back to his girlfriend, but has to leave town for good, stated by Mr. Wallace. Storyline 3 Storyline 3 involves Mr. Wallace's wife, Mia. Vincent has been given a task to look after Mia whilst Mr. Wallace is out of town. He takes it to his swanky diner. After their lovely meal, they go back to Mia's house. Mia is currently on cocaine and Vincent is on heroin. Mia finds Vincent's heroin and racks up a line. You are not supposed to do this with heroin, which I have learned from this film. She then starts overdosing, which is when Vincent finds her lead on the floor, foaming at the mouth. Vincent then takes her to his heroin dealer to see if he can save her. After a lot of hassle, he saves her, and Vincent takes her back to her place, and they agree to never speak about it again to anyone. And that's the run through of the movie. The film immensely focuses on conversations between each different character that reveal both the dark comedy style of humour and their perspectives on life. The title of the film, Pulp Fiction, is a reference to the pulp magazines and crime books, which were extremely popular during the 20th century. They were most well known for their dialogue and violent nature. Quentin Tarantino's unique style of outstanding dialogue, excessive use of violence and powerful relatable character creation add to the overall theme of how 
chance governs the plot and contributes to the formation of ethical views. An interesting thing I have noticed in Quentin Tarantino's films is that he includes a camera shot with a car boot in every film. For example, in Pulp Fiction, there is a low camera shot looking up at Vincent and Jules from the boot where the dead body is lying. I find this quite interesting because you don't really hear any other directors doing this. I think doing this helps the viewers of your films have a better understanding of what your films are going to tail of before they even watch it. Pulp Fiction assesses the characteristic style of Quentin Tarantino, showing that he disrupts the normal conventions of an action movie in order to convey his extreme ideology in an appealing way. For example, if you compare another action movie like Die Hard, which also stars Bruce Willis, to Pulp Fiction, you can see the underlining differences and similarities. In both there is lots of violence, action and dialogue, etc. But in Pulp Fiction, the use of randomly unnecessary violence drenched with real life dialogue creates comical morbid scenes which appear comical. The acting of the characters as well as the dialogue turns them from what we should be unloved villains into likeable characters of which the audience members can understand and unable to connect with. These methods of directing allow Tarantino to establish his radical views and ethics and luck in an appealing film.